Good afternoon, parents and pupils. This is Steve Sumner, Deputy Head Teacher at Samuel Ward Academy. And this afternoon, I'm just going to talk you through a little bit around how we're using remote learning to support you and your children in doing the best they possibly can during the sort of time of remote schooling. So just a, a reminder of the formats that we're using. So um, Go for Schools is where we've asked teachers to make sure they've set the work and the work is set every Monday with a week's deadline. Now, I appreciate that can make Monday look like a bit of a pile up for students as well, but we thought that was the best way to do it rather than having teachers drop in other bits of work across the course of a week. We've emphasised that the instruction should be really clear and to make sure that we don't have pupils with great big lists of tasks on Go for Schools, we've disabled what we call the tracking box, which means that when teachers have set the work, when the deadline has passed, which is after one week, then that work will disappear from the child's area. And again, it just reduces the sort of impact on them. So if they have finished it by that time and sent it to the teacher, wonderful. If they haven't, um, then again, they can still do the work. But of course, it won't still be in that area and still kind of putting that sort of pressure on them. Secondly, we've created a YouTube channel. Uh, we're proud of this and the teachers have created some really, really wonderful work. And um, this is providing tutorial guidance for pupils through the work set. And again, I think it's a very helpful thing for them to do. And it's good for them to be able to hear their own teachers' voices. Um, we've now put all of our pupils and classes onto a Microsoft app called Microsoft Teams. And the main use of this is going to be for um, the more substantial pieces of work we're asking pupils to do. So each pupil will have two assignments over the course of the summer term. And so one per half term. And for these two pieces, teachers will track them so that they can support and find out that they've done them and, and look after them and guide them. And also they'll be providing some more personalised feedback. Um, other resources that we've been using include GCSE WattPod, MathsWatch, Seneca Learning, Edmodo, and of course the wonderful art and design platform. So what I'm going to do in this session is, is talk you through some of the guides and, and demonstrate in Microsoft Outlook um, how to get to Teams and how to use some of the functionality. So by now everyone should have been added and here's the link to download the app and to use Teams in the browser is that. And pupils log in with their full school email and password and if this has been forgotten then please email itrequests at samuelward.co.uk and they will help you out. So this document which has been emailed to all parents and pupils as well um, we'll give you some guidance on it and what I thought would be helpful now is just to talk you through that in a live way. So first of all, in terms of your Outlook browser, uh, pupils should go to here, which is what we call the App Launcher, and here they'll see um, the Teams logo here and then click on Teams. This will then bring up a screen for them in their um, desktop, in their app, so you see there it is. And then what it'll come up with is, if I just come out of this team. And it will come up with this area and this is all the teams now in my case obviously it's a series of uh, professional groups as well as some of the classes i teach but for pupils it will be all of their class lists up here um, and again here you can see the different kind of elements of functionality that can be taken part with uh, but the main focus we're looking at is the team so what then a pupil will have is this is what a class logo will look like it will have swa it will have the year group it will have the, the um, the subject and it will have the set. So this class is Samuel Ward Academy, it's year 10, it's English and it's set 1. So the next thing that we would do is we would click on this and that will take us into our actual class. Now here I've been doing some online lessons with um, some of my pupils in smaller groups. This is something I'm going to send a tutorial about at the end of the week because I want everyone focusing on the functionality of Teams as, as something to exchange work and we'll look at sort of the remote teaching learning aspect later on as both teachers and pupils become more confident in using it. Now this area of posts is where um, teachers can share work and information and notices and conversation with pupils. So I've used it to discuss various things with pupils and put up bits and pieces of work. Um, as you can see, pupils can respond and it's useful for me to have um, some conversation with them. And again, we have some engagement and responses from pupils, which is all extremely helpful. This section here, Marked Files, is where I can upload um, work for pupils. So as you can see in class materials, I've added some poetry um, revision materials and some information about Teams for Pupils. Now, lots of individual departments and teachers are also supporting their pupils with guidance around how to use Microsoft Teams well. 
but I just thought it would be helpful for me to present a school overview in terms of how to use it well. Now, the next thing I'd like to look at is what we call the class notebook. And this is going to be a private area for each pupil that teachers have created for them. So when we go to class notebook, we just click on that. And then here is this space here. I'd recommend um, that people expand the tab, which is here. And you can see it a bit more clearly. And again, what we do now is click on this arrow here. And then obviously this is a teacher's perspective, so it has all of the pupils in my class. But as a uh, pupil, pupils will just have these folders, a collaboration space in which they can do shared work with other pupils if the teacher directs them to do so, and a content library in which the teacher can put lots of other resources. Um, if we take an example of how I've organised it, so if we take this pupil here and I click on Aaliyah, then what you'll see is I've organised their areas into eight folders which each represent a different element of the GCS English course. And for their most recent assignment piece of work, I'd ask them to upload work into the Language Paper 2 folder. And here, Aaliyah has done the two questions that I'd ask them to do under the subheading Articles. And pupils can type directly into this area, or they can upload it. The other thing that they can do with um, the class notebook is it does have its own separate app. And you can open it in browser or pupils can open it in an app and if they open it in the app I suppose the only thing that gives you is a bit more functionality um, in terms of what you do and how you upload documents it but again it's not something you have to do it's just something that can be useful so if we just close that app down and again we can resume editing our work in the app or we can just close it down and then to come out of the class notebook um, I just reduce the size and then we come into the different areas. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is the assignments piece. And assignments is something which enables teachers to set work for their pupils and um, set specific deadlines for it. And the reason we're using this in conjunction with Go for Schools is this helps tell the teacher really clearly who's handed in the work. And therefore, it's going to be the most useful element for those two bigger pieces of work which teachers are going to provide individual feedback on. So as you can see, I've set um, one of my two assignments here. And um, so far, five out of 25 pupils have handed it in. And it's English language questions one, two, and three. I've also created a weekly review quiz, which pupils can do. And teachers will be doing that again via um, Microsoft Teams and via the assignment section. So in terms of what an assignment looks like, if we click on this and go on to the student view, this is what the students will see. So they'll see the question here, they'll see when it's due, um, some instructions I've added, reference materials, which is a task added, and then what they'll get here is the mark scheme. So in terms of when we click on the mark scheme, this gives the pupils guidance in terms of how they will be marked. Um, they can download it and look at it from there and give a score. So in terms of the assignment itself, what the teacher sees is the different pupils and their names and who's handed in work and who hasn't. If we take this example here, if I click on this as a teacher, I will then be able to see the pupils work and then I can re reference mark scheme and I can enter the feedback there and I can give them a mark and then we can give them, we can return it to pupils through this button at the bottom here. And as you can see, pupils can upload digital work as you saw with the example from Aaliyah. Um, they can type it straight in to um, the assignment work or they can take a photo of it and send it to me like that. So all of those different things work really well in terms of submitting the work. The main aim of doing this is to move away from having a large number of emails exchanged between teachers and pupils, because that's really, really unwieldy. And I think both for teachers and pupils, a large number of emails can feel quite stressful and quite difficult. I think um, particularly now in the digital age, we feel sort of beholden to respond to emails and engage with them. And actually, it's much better for pupils to be have this kind of virtual learning environment where they can upload their work and know it's there and the teacher can respond to them in good time. So as you can see, I think this is a fairly straightforward process and a really useful app. Um, how we want pupils using this is to upload their weekly work and then to upload their assignments. So again, teachers can really support with them effectively. Teams also has an element of functionality where 
um, teachers can create video lessons for pupils to engage with live or just be available at certain times for pupils to sort of comment and question them. At this point, what we want to make sure is that everyone is using Teams in an effective way and is confident and able to use it for submitting work. And then as our teachers become more skilled with it and our pupils and parents become more familiar with it, we will then be able to use it for some um, online delivery of lessons. But again, this isn't something we've said is an expectation for teachers or pupils because we appreciate that there's many requirements um, and there's many pressures on people's lives, both teachers and our families at the moment, which means trying to keep to a timetable is just not a viable or indeed sensible thing. But I hope this has been useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me um, at my school email account or email the IT support network, which is included in this presentation. Um, I hope you and your families are well and safe. The quality of work that is being produced by young people in this situation is absolutely fantastic. And that's testament to your role and supportive nature as parents in terms of your relationship with the school. So thank you very much for all you're doing. Keep on going with everything. And again, if you have any questions, please let me know. With all of these things, what we will find is that the more people have a go at it and experiment within it and work on it, then the better and the more au fait they'll become with the functionality of these apps we're using to um, engage in the best possible remote teaching and learning we can deliver. Thank you very much, uh, parents and pupils. Again, I hope you're all very well. And please get in touch with me, Mr. Sumner at Samuel Ward Academy, if you need any support or guidance through the current time. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.